Good evening, everyone. For those who may not know me, my name is Deborah Smith. I'm the director for the Department of Economic and Community Development. I also have an audience with me, um, Veronica Fields, who's the grant administrator, Dave Dieter, who's the assistant director, and you all know Renee Lamus, who is the chief of staff. All right, so I've given you these handouts right here. On the first page, it talks about proposed CDBG funding. Uh, we actually received our uh, allocation from HUD maybe a week a week ago, I believe it is. And so this year we'll be receiving $3,040,237. We look to have $5,000 in program income. And so our total will be $3,045,237. Are there any questions on the front page? No. So the next page is actually proposed CDBG funding. These projects are proposed, as I mentioned. Um, and so the first request is City of Erie request. So there is $500,000 for curb cuts. Uh, if you have questions, just. Is this in addition to the one that we spent last year? This is a new budget. Yeah. It is. Oh, okay. Um, tree removal and planning, $20,000. We didn't get applications for emergency de uh, demolition or code enforcement. They're being funded uh, under other funding. Um, road construction, $496,473. Park and playground improvements, $25,000. Um, DECD administration is $608,047. We have a City of Erie Department, Fire Department, I'm sorry, dive truck, $145,000. Uh, there will also be funding for Love Your Block, which is listed in the public service, as well as the Summer Rec Program. And there is uh, listed indirect costs. And so uh, the city can take up to 10% of what our allocation is uh, from our admin. Are there questions on City of Erie request? Well, you said up to 10% for admin? Of what our admin cost is, so like maybe $60,000 okay. for indirect costs. Okay. Okay, there are two line items for the summer rec. Could you explain uh, or so park at, some summer rec? Some place so on the sheet that you're looking at, it has summer rec, but I did not put a dollar amount in there. I put it actually under the public service as well as the City of Erie Love Your Block, which is going to be uh, many grants for residents uh, to do um, some home improvements. The many grants are $600 each, but that's under the public service. Mm -hmm. So I list mm -hmm. the activities, but I didn't put a dollar amount on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions on? Yeah, I have a question. What, was, what ended up being the um, indirect costs for last year? The city didn't take any indirect costs. Okay. And so there is a form that when we do um, get our uh, contract from HUD, you have to actually fill that form out and you have to actually list what those indirect costs are. So you have to be accountable for what they may be. Uh, for, for parks and playgrounds, is this to fund our normal uh, summer programming that we usually do that we, uh, or is that for the park, else. the park and playgrounds with the twenty-five thousand dollars. No, that is actually what the, it's a normal allocation. Oh, I'm, I'm misreading it. I need to put my spectacles on. Never mind. <laughs> no. And make sure this is oh twenty-five. No, never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this year we don't have any um, redevelopment authority projects. We did receive a project from. Erie Eastside Renaissance for $1,247,370. Um, at the presentation, I told them that actually their project should have been, they should have completed a home application for that. CDBG doesn't cover those kind of costs. Um, didn't hear anything else back from that here, so I don't know if he's going to wait till next year to do something like that or what the status of that is. All right, so this is our public services uh, listed here. And so what we try to do is to give um, the agencies what they requested. 
Um, on some of them, if you look at them, there may be like a small difference. Say for instance, like BTW Human Resources, they requested $75,985. Um, we gave, we're looking to give them $72,345, and that's because all of the projects that they had listed under their budget justification, uh, the percentage was 40%. And so they were requesting 60% for the accountant. And so we just tucked the difference, which I think was maybe $3,000, because if the, if the actual, um, projects, you know, rec aids and, you know, direct projects that they're using for the kids are 40%. We can't pay an accountant 60%. Um, uh, MLK requested $96,000. So we're proposing to give them $50,000. We also have CDBG CARES Act funding where we will give them $30,000 uh, from there. So actually their allocation will be, it's $80,000. Um, the current contract that we're in right now, we're, we gave them $64,500. They have not expended any dollars um, as of yet and that contract ends June 30th. So we couldn't justify the $96,000. They haven't spent their money from last year? Well, it's this current year, July 1 through June 30th, but okay. they, ha they don't have any expenses as of today, March. Okay. Do we know why the <clears throat> Multicultural Center is year two with no application? Have we heard from them? Mm -hmm. okay. They actually sent an email and said they would not be submitting the application this year. Oh, so. Okay, just making sure. We have emergency care, uh, and they came in for lifters. I think you were here for that one. Uh, we are actually trying to work with them. We're hoping maybe we could use some of our CDBG CARES Act to actually maybe help assist them with that project. But um, they would have to come back and let us know how the project can tie back to COVID. And so then HUD would actually have to, actually have to review that. And if HUD said, OK, then we could assist them with some of the lifters. Um, because it is a public service activity, and we're only allowed to use $778,960, it wouldn't be feasible to try to take it out of our regular public service activity. I noticed like the JFK doesn't have anything higher. Does that mean they haven't submitted anything yet, or just? So JFK requested 67703. Okay, and so we are looking to give them 56772. They also have not submitted any um, invoices this year. Um, so we're hoping that those come. Yeah, the 56772, I think, is actually for um, two of the positions that they requested in the budget for fiscal year 2022. Uh, this year we look to fund uh, YMCA, it's Erie County Reentry Program. It was formerly with GCAP. Uh, they're looking to hire a uh, youth, is it youth caseworker or youth? I, so. I missed that meeting, but I saw, I met with Monica this week. Did you? Okay. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. That's right. They actually requested 65252. They don't have all of the funding in place for some of the other positions. I think they asked for space and accounting and other things like that. Um, we're looking to just fund the position for the youth worker. I don't know if it's a case manager or, I forgot. Yeah, I it, it's program. doing some of the, like their reentry type work, mm -hmm. but then they have their after school program. So this is a, like a preventative measure. She right. had a whole bunch of data on, mm -hmm. you know, what this looked like as far as uh, long-term impact. Right. The PALS program? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, that's a uh, Erie Police Athletic League. Mm -hmm. um, they go to different schools, um, Boys and Girls Club, uh, different agencies and different things like that, and they um, work with the youth for after school. Um, what our funding will be for is like consumable supplies, T-shirts, uh, different games and, you know, games that they could play and, and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering 
Mm -hmm. specific. And, and then Love Your Block. Uh, that is like actually one of the City of Erie's uh, projects, Love, Love My Block. Um, they are looking to do many grants and home improvements for uh, residents. Um, I don't know if there's certain, there's certain, we have it as City of Erie, but there may be like a certain target area that they're looking to do for it. Yeah. Um, do I that work the, for. I saw the recent presentation. I was just wondering, given that there's a zero for the request. Well, I, this is the first year. Actually, I moved it down and I didn't change it. So they did okay. request $35,000. Okay. Got it. Are there um, other questions on the public service? And youth leadership this year, for some reason, uh, Edison did not submit an application. I'm not sure why. Um, he hasn't actually um, expended any of the dollars from the current year we're on right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. The next category is our. Um, economic development. So Gannon, um, we've been working with them. They assist small businesses with uh, business plans, uh, loan documents, different things like that. They requested uh, 53,318 this year and we gave that to them the past year. So we've been giving them $50,000. Uh, Paramount Pursuit did not um, submit an application this year. They told us they would not be submitting one. Excuse me, Deborah. Could you speak into the microphone? It's a little bit hard to hear you back here. Oh, sure. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank it's on. You. Yeah. Um, the Manus Enterprise did submit a, a application for one hundred seventy thousand three hundred and three three hundred dollars. Uh, we. I guess let me see how I say this. Okay, so we did provide them with funding. I think the last two years, I think their funding was $135,000. They have not completed that contract yet. It is a job creation contract. Uh, we did send the forms to them to see what the status is of that because they did not, com they have not completed the uh, job creation or retention. Um, we're kind of hesitant to provide any other funding. It was actually kind of hard to even provide the first funding to them because they're a gas station. Um, so, any questions on that? Is there any sort of, like, does it hit a certain amount of years of they haven't used the funding or submitted what what the details are of it that then that funding is Oh, sorry. So what is we requested do, back, or how does that work? So what we do, well, we don't give the fund. It, it's on a reimbursement, reimbursement right. basis. And so what we do is we allocate funding, we do contracts, and so at the end of um, at June thirtieth is normally at the end of our fiscal year. And so if you have not expended those dollars, uh, we do reprogramming. Um, the money goes into this year, but it has to. Uh, actually stay, we do grant-based accounting, I guess. It has to stay in that year. And so there is some reprogramming, I believe, maybe on the fourth sheet that we'll discuss when I get to that. Um, but yeah, we have a, de a deadline as far as when we have to actually expend um, funding. Oh, you know, we can't keep it up. Mm -hmm. okay. So July 1 through June 30th is the normal contract year. Uh, climate changer didn't request anything? We gave we we gave climate changes um, fifty seven thousand dollars in the current year that we're in right now. We're working with them right now to um, complete those renovations. So, uh, Kristen Ministries uh, is a. Uh, they do small business uh, development. They have. Um, I have, yeah, and so. I'm kind of liberty. Yeah. Um, 
Erie County Redevelopment for Sabakio Opportunity Park. Uh, we are still actually researching that to see if that is actually an eligible item that we can actually fund or not. So there's a question mark there. Um, that is the project with MC, MCI? MCI. MCIC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Crime Victim Center. Um, you left out a T in Opportunity. Which one? Sabaki Opportunity Park. You left out a T in case you're, oh, in case you're yeah, passing this is somebody it. else. Um, Crime Victim Center uh, put in a request for $78,800. Um, this is to assist them with uh, one of the units that they own over on West 18th Street. Uh, it's to assist with, um, I believe it's called Barb's Daycare Center. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So uh, hopefully we're looking to um, assist them with the renovation so that she can actually move into a, a bigger facility. Mm. Are there questions on the economic development part of this? You're looking like, oh, okay. Um, the public facilities. We actually have um, an interim assistance. So we're looking to do neighborhood cleanup um, as part of where the burn grant is located to get dumpsters and um, gloves and garbage bags and different things like that in the summertime. Uh, some of the other um, neighborhoods are doing that. So we just felt the need that we should put $10,000 in there so that the Lower East Side from, I think it's East 6 and Wayne over to 26 and Holland over to up to 26 and Wayne. So it's six, six, East 6 and Wayne over to 6 and Holland up to 26 and Wayne. So there'll be uh, different neighborhood cleanups uh, for that target area. And this is in conjunction with the burn grant. Are there questions on uh, what our allocation is for CDBG? Has our West Bayfront not submitted for reimbursement for last Who's year? That? Our West Bayfront? The question mark there? For the sidewalks? Mm -hmm. We didn't fund the sidewalks. We They put in, actually if you look at, um, and I put a number, they, were, they had requested $138,748 last year. but. Because we know there are other neighborhoods who also run sidewalks, uh, we didn't think we could okay. actually fund them and not fund the other ones. Yep. So, on the next sheet, it's reprogramming funds an amount of nine hundred fifty-seven thousand eight hundred seven dollars, and our reprogramming comes from various years, and we have to actually keep um, the reprogramming dollars and that. Pacific year uh, that HUD, HUD provides us with funding. And so we're looking to take projects that uh, did not use all of their funding and actually transfer funding to street reconstruction. Um, Public Works does not have any bond money or liquid fuels or anything like that. And so we've found it necessary to try and assist them so that they could actually go out and, you know, complete reconstruction of the streets in the low moderate income neighborhoods. Any question? So about thirty percent of the money is getting reprogrammed? Um, well, well, these are from different years, so you wouldn't Oh, so it's a number say. of years added. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, there's okay. money like from CD18, CD20, CD21. Okay, to, okay, okay. So those yeah, are years. Various dollars, those numbers yeah. are years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Flip it, please. Did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, 
and I know this isn't on your part because these organizations uh, run their own programming, but it it disheartens me that once again we're giving away you know the rental rehabilitation in the home buyer rehab money uh, that we're unsuccessful with these programming again to the tune of. Which sheet, are you, which sheet are you looking at? The home one? Okay, I was going to go over the home one. So, um, we, actually, we have money in our home buyer and our housing rehab. I know you Not do. just this year that we're putting money in. We have prior year money as well. Um, what the problem is is that there are, not a lot, there are not a lot of contractors. You have to be lead certified, and um, there are not a lot of contractors out there. We actually have a backlist of people who we are looking to assist who have taken applications who um, the redevelopment authority has gone through with as far as doing a walkthrough saying that these um, people are eligible um, we do put funding in um, each of our fiscal years for home buyer rehab and homeowner rehab I guess we just have to get the word out to try and get people trained uh, to be led certified or get some more contractors but that is what the problem is right now. There are not enough contractors. I believe there are maybe two or three contractors that are actually kind of working uh, with the redevelopment authority. Uh, I know they are actually advertising for more contractors. Hopefully they will get them. Um, I know they're looking to hire more inspectors. Um, that's our hope too, so they can assist us with walkthroughs as far as um, you know, getting homeowners the assistance that they, they need to get their house up to code. Um, and so when you, Mr. Keys, when you talk about just money being, you know, given away for um, home buyer or homeowner rehab, there are certain requirements that we have to actually fulfill for, from HUD. We actually have to complete a community housing development um, organization uh, project each year. We have to set aside 15%. Uh, for one of those agencies, and we actually only have one total, and that's HANDS. Right. And so HANDS did submit um, an application for uh, the building that is down at 1319 Parade Street. It's going to be a rental rehab. Um, HANDS does have other uh, properties that are down in that area. They have the Midtown project that had uh, 15 rental units, plus there's some home buyer units down there. They recently completed. Um, I think it was a 10 unit that is on the corner of, I want to say maybe 13th or 14th in Parade in that area. Uh, so their act, hands is actually doing a lot of stuff too, you know, bring that neighborhood. Yeah, I'm not uh, against coming in and under budget. I'm just, <laughs> you, you know, uh, uh, it'd be nice if we had some way to, uh, you know, put our apples back in the apples budget. <laughs> you know, so that the people that it originally intended to benefit could benefit. Yeah. Well, right now we need um, more contractors and more um, inspectors who are LED certified. Are there questions on um, <coughs> this, the home activities? Are, where our, our West Bayfront is, they're looking to do a two unit um, rental rehab. So, um, Raspberry? Yeah, seventh? Raspberry and 7th. Yeah, 7th and Raspberry. There is a, a commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, they requested $213,000 for rental rehab. I got to do the cleanup on that a couple summers ago. Yeah. Long time. Are there questions on... Um, any of the home activities? No. All right, so the next um, sheet that I gave you is actually our emergency solutions grant. We don't get a whole lot of money from emergency solutions. Um, so 60% of what the $273,428 goes to um, emergency shelters. Uh, we have a couple of transitional living shelters that were actually grandfathered in. 32.5% uh, goes to GCAT Rapid Rehousing for 
um, security deposit and up to three months of rent, and then we're allowed to take 7.5% for uh, administration. And so for this funding right here, it's actually based on actual nights that were served by these agencies. Um, so there's a formula that we use based on the number of total beds that they have. And you can actually kind of see what last year's um, 2022, I wouldn't say last year, but the current year that we're in, um, fiscal year 2022's allocation versus fiscal year 2023. Please keep in mind that, you know, COVID um, was out there, so a lot of um, agencies may not have gotten um, all of the bed nights that they would normally get uh, because they were trying to do, you know, six feet uh, apart and then just trying to be safe. What, what qualifies as beds on that? Like, is the overflow shelter our neighbor's place? Because it's like trans, you know, transition costs. That's moving. temporary, so we we wouldn't be able to fund that. We did fund them out of our, um, I think it was, I don't know if it was ESG or CDBG, CARES funding. Was it CDBG or ESG, Dave? CARES funding for uh, the overflow. It was CDBG CARES. Was it CDBG? Yeah. Okay. In prior years. No, I think actually the contract probably just okay. recently ended, maybe last year. Okay. Yeah, we did. Uh, they are awarded money during the pandemic. Is that what you're talking about? The for the temporary solution uh, uh, that uh, I think Chuck was asking about the temporary uh, shelters that they were awarded money during the pandemic. They were, and even and yeah, so, yeah. yeah, we did reach out to the temporary shelters. I mean, we gave money to the upper room. Um, EMU, well, the refuge, EMU, A received funding. Actually, all of the shelters received received funding. Uh, are there questions on the uh, emergency solutions grant? All right. So these are all of our projects that we're working on. We look to have our proposed. Um, fiscal year 2023 uh, draft plan uh, on display on March 17th as well as an ad of that list of uh, these projects right here. Uh, we look to come to City Council on April 19th or May 3rd, I believe, to ask you to allow us to submit our plan. At that time, it won't be any projects that are listed, it'll just be a resolution with the amount of funding that we're going to receive. Uh, in June, you do get a list of all of the different projects that we are proposing here. Um, so just ask me when we come with that resolution that you say yes, because if you say no, that means that you're saying that you don't want the city of Erie to receive that funding. Any questions for me? I'm done. Terrific. <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you. If you have questions, please feel free to you know reach out to me. We will have our uh, second public hearing on April third. At that time, we will present um, the activities that we're going to fund. They'll also be presented um, in the proposed plan on March seventeenth, as well as a list, as a list, and it'll be on the city's website as well. All right. Uh, city Council is going to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter.